Many people who use functional mushrooms for a specific purpose have been completely inspired. Some people start growing their own lion's mane, some people start spreading the word with their friends or on social media, and some just start companies. That's what we did here at Freshcap, and that's what the guys over at Umbo did as well. Umbo is a functional mushroom company that was founded by former athletes Rashad Evans and Jake Plummer, along with plant medicine advocate Del Jolly. On today's mushroom show, we chat with Dell and Rashad about the amazing power of functional mushrooms and about what they're doing over at Umbo. From the nutritional potential of gourmet mushrooms to the untapped compounds available in functional mushrooms, and even talking about psilocybin mushrooms and the potential benefits from psychedelic mushrooms like Psilocybe cubensis, we cover it all. And if you're at all interested in mushrooms and how they can impact both our physical and mental health, I think you're gonna love this conversation. So let's jump into the conversation with Dell and Rashad from Umbo. Dell and Rashad from Umbo Mushrooms, thank you so much for joining us on The Mushroom Show. Super excited to have you here. Yeah. Thank you for having us, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so much, Tony. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, this is really cool. I mean, the first time I heard about Umbo is because, uh, you know, there was a bunch of press releases talking about, well, the, the press release was uh, ex-NFL player starts a mushroom company, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, that was Jake Plummer. He's not with us today, but you guys are here today. Rashad, your background is in the UFC and Dell, your background is you're an advocate and educator uh, from CBD and cannabis, but now going into mushrooms. So I think that's where I wanted to get started. Maybe I'll start uh, with you, Rashad. How did you get interested in mushrooms and what brought you to what you're doing today with, with Umbo? You know, it was a, uh, some bad news that brought me to mushrooms. You know, I was actually going to fight in UFC 205 and I got some bad news that I'm not able to compete uh, because I had a brain injury that came back on my MRIs. And uh, they didn't know if I'd be able to compete again. You know, it was, it looked like a career ender just from um, a health standpoint. And uh, I had to do a series of tests and, and a bunch of um, cognitive tests to kind of prove that, to show that I was okay. But it, it really got, you know, the, the stamp of approval when I went to Pittsburgh and see the guy from concussion who, you know, has done a lot with brain injuries and, you know, knows a lot about you know, the whole CTE thing. So um, once I sat with him and once he re you know, evaluated everything, it was determined that what I had, the injury I had was an old injury. So I was able to continue to compete. Uh, but, you know, as my career dwindled down, you know, it, it kind of became more of a pressing issue. You know, what was I going to be left with as far as, you know, mental capacity once my uh, career was done? You know, I never, I didn't want to be trapped in my body like you see so many other, you know, uh, professional fighters, professional boxers, for that matter, Muhammad Ali, uh, you know, is, is one of them. And I was like, man, I just pray to God that I don't become a prisoner in my own body. So I need to find something. I need to do something in order to kind of head that off. So then I started to dive into, you know, what kind of ways can I heal my brain? And there wasn't a lot of information out there. And luckily, uh, just, you know, I happened to run into an episode of, of Paul Stamets and, and, and Joe Rogan talking about, you know, Paul Stamets, uh, Michael stack that he uses, you know, lion's mane, psilocybin and niacin. And, you know, I thought like, okay, well, you know, I might as well give it a shot. I don't really have anything else to lose. So, um, I tried it and, uh, you know, I, I had amazing results within the first, uh, three to four weeks. And, um, you know, it was, it was noticeable. And at first I was like, is this placebo and stuff like that? So then I was, kind of testing it out, but it, it wasn't no placebo. It, it was a real deal. And then the gains just kept coming, you know, like, you know, things as far as like uh, my, my interest change, you know, my, um, my cognitive function as far as my focus change, uh, my mental clarity change, uh, my neurological body felt like it was healing because I was able to, you know, have faster reaction time and, you know, starting to, to, to have some vigor and, 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 um, an ability, physically speaking, that I didn't have, you know, for a while, you know, not since I was first started in the sport, like when I was in my twenties. So, I was uh, thoroughly interested, and, and it piqued, you know, um, my interest at that point. And you know, at that point, I was like, you know, I, I got to know more. And um, around that same time, you know, Dell and I started to really, uh, you know, grow our relationship because I knew Dell before that, you know, uh, but we really started to grow our relationship around that time where I was uh, kind of coming to that understanding. And, um, you know, Dell, you know, showed me so much more, uh, even more than, than, than what I was even knowing. So 
I started to take a further step down that path. But what, what it left me with was just this overwhelming understanding that, you know what, man, like I was lucky to be able to find something that was able to, you know, give me the relief that I did. And more importantly, you know, find way that to, to heal my brain in a way that I didn't think was possible. or didn't even know it was possible and never heard it to be possible. So, um, you know, I was thinking like, you know, this is something that a lot of, you know, athletes, you know, combat athletes can, can use, you know, football players and hockey players and, you know, boxers and whatever you do, you get hit in the head, you know, um, it, it can be something huge for, for that. And, uh, you know, not only that, you know, it was helping me out on a, on a, on a, you know, a psychological level too, you know, being an athlete, uh, is the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows, especially being a fighter. So, having to combat, you know, the, the, uh, the mood that goes along with the highs and the lows of riding that roller coaster, you know, the, the mushrooms were able to help me a lot with that, you know, to the point where it gave me perspective on those, you know, those issues that was causing me the, 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 the psychological pain. And, um, you know, I, I was just making gains and ways and starting to look at life and, you know, had a whole facelift when it came to perspective and just, so many different areas, you know, health, nutrition, um, and, and just, you know, physically speaking, I was just becoming a different person. And it, it, it was the mushrooms, you know, it was the functional as well as the, the, the uh, psilocybin. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing to hear. And uh, I think a lot of people might think that's crazy that a mushroom could do that. But uh, I don't think that's crazy at all. And actually, one thing, I don't know if I've ever talked this about this before, but I should bring it up because I had a very similar situation um, as you. Like I had very serious concussion issues for the longest time, uh, which culminated in a time where I, I shot a 30 odd six and my eye was too close to the scope and the scope hit me in the head and I got a horrible concussion, uh, which I thought was it. And I tried everything. I went to concussion specialists. I did all the eyeball exercises. I did all this stuff. And it got to the point where I would sneeze and I would get like concussion symptoms and all this kind of stuff. But what ended up fixing it for me, and I didn't even realize it was happening, but I started taking lion's mane together with CBD. So not the psilocybin stack that you talk about, but lion's mane and CBD together. And I noticed after four weeks, I was walking along on a trail looking for mushrooms, actually, and there was a log across the trail. I hit my head on the log really hard, fully expecting the concussion symptoms to come swarming back. And it just didn't happen. And uh, I definitely credit the Lions Mane for that and the CBD. And it's, it's pretty incredible. So um, that's amazing to hear. Uh, to yet another person who has some concussions issues that, uh, you know, might have resolved from, from the power of mushrooms. Now, Dell, I do want to get your background as well. Uh, you come from a totally different angle. So why don't you tell us what brought you to, to the world of mushrooms? Yeah, so I, um, I started, I guess, my mushroom journey uh, when I was actually turkey hunting out in Nebraska uh, over a decade ago. And I saw this farmer walking through the woods. He kept looking on the ground. He had a bag of things. I didn't know what he was up to. And as he got closer, I kind of flagged him down and he was, he was uh, getting morel mushrooms. And so he taught me how to look for morels. And then I was just totally hooked on that. And in Colorado, the Rocky Mountains have... <clears throat> one of the most diverse sets of fungi next to, you know, Eastern European countries. And so we're super fortunate to forage here for, you know, porcinis and oysters isn't just the, the hodgepodge of things that are here in Colorado. Uh, but I was working in uh, CBD with Charlotte's web. And uh, uh, that was kind of my intro to plant medicine where I was somewhat against marijuana and then seeing kids having seizures and my old um, business partners and friends fighting in the UFC and having some concussions. And then there was a campaign that Charlotte's web was doing with the realm of caring called when the bright lights fade. And this is around CT chronic traumatic encephalopathy and, and, uh, CBD as a, as a, um, option there. And, um, it kind of changed my narrative. Like, Oh man, I thought, you know, only stoner smoke weed. What, now you're saying that it's good for your, you know, cognition and some of the issues that are afflicting my friends. And so I um, got involved in that campaign, said, I have to work with these people. This is super important. I need to change narratives. And uh, I started working for Charlotte's Web. And uh, that really kind of flipped my narrative on plant medicine as a whole. In that time frame. Kevin Matthews was running the decrim nature or D I'm sorry, decrim, uh, 
uh, Denver campaign on psilocybin in the city of Denver, the first municipality to uh, change any laws around psilocybin in particular. And I got involved with that in early 2018. I was the outreach director and uh, just knew that we could help change the national narrative if we got on the ballot alone, let alone one. You know, we won on May 7th, 2019. At the last three weeks, I, I hit up Rashad. I hit up everybody I knew who had a platform and said, hey, tell everybody in Denver to vote for this. And in that three weeks, we had everybody from, you know, Rashad and I reached out to Duncan Trussell. Duncan Trussell posted something. Joe Rogan reposted it and it just kind of set fire. And we won that vote by 1,900 votes. And so that was super, super close. And then as everybody knows, like, two, three months later, Oakland did all entheogens. And so I've, I've been an advocate for that for a while. And even before we won that election, I knew that people were going to need to know how to use psilocybin because there's going to be a story that airs and people are going to say, I need to use psilocybin for my son or daughter's PTSD or smoking cessation or anorexia or all the things that psilocybin are proven to be helpful for but no one's going to have any starting point. The people who know nothing about this are going to, you know, have no starting point on how do I use this stuff? And so my partner in unlimited sciences, my psychedelic research nonprofit, Heather Jackson, she was already collecting data with Johns Hopkins on how people use cannabis for their seizures, for their pain, for all the other ailments that cannabis could help with. And basically we said, hey, run this cannabis data upstairs to Roland Griffiths, Matt Johnson, Albert Garcia Romeo, who's our, um, our uh, principal investigator on this study, show them this data and ask them if they want us to replicate this for them on the psilocybin side. They saw that, they understood, oh my God, this is such important information because it's how people are using these things in the real world. We need to, we need to do this because it could inform clinical studies. That's why Roland Griffiths went with it. Um, but more importantly, we, us, we could inform city council members. We could inform the general public. You know, there's so many people that we could inform. And ultimately, we could validate the fact that the community has been using this forever. They know what they're doing. This doesn't need to be put in pharmaceuticals hands, you know, because uh, we've got the option to show, hey, look, the majority of people are using this, are doing it very safely very effectively. And there's a lot we can learn from them. And so unlimited science was, was formed and, uh, umbo, we are hoping our functional mushroom company will have the corporate social responsibility for some of the profits we make roll right back into psychedelic research. That's why we were founded. That's why we're, we're trying to lift this off because at the end of the day, uh, we all want to stamp our legacy on, uh, healthy plant medicine and people taking their health back into their own hands. A hundred percent. And I, I really do want to dig into that and dig into Umbo and dig into how that's supporting psychedelic research. But I think before we get back to that, I want to throw another question back at you, Rashad. Um, is this like, you know, not necessarily psilocybin, but using psilocybin with other uh, functional mushrooms, is this something that you were aware of during your career? Or is this something that you know a lot of other athletes, maybe in high impact sports were using? Or is it just something that nobody has really been aware of until kind of recently? Well, when I first started, uh, it was something that, you know, not many people were aware of. I did hear of some fighters using it uh, in, in the capacity of just kind of um, microdosing, but I didn't know how they were using it. You know, what were they using it for specifically besides just, you know, the microdose? They weren't, I didn't know they were trying to heal any kind of, uh, you know, concussive injury or anything like that. So that's how I knew of it. But it, those stories were, you know, once in a while, like I heard, um, like, uh, Joe Schilling was using it or something like that. And, you know, that kind of piqued my interest, but I didn't know in which way he was using it. So when it came to using it the way that I did, um, I didn't really know anybody who did it like that. So, um, being able to have the results that I did, it, it was shocking for me because I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't believe it. Like I, I didn't, but like if, like, I didn't think that anything like that would work. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just didn't, I didn't know enough to do about it, but it, it, the changes were real, you know, and, and, and these changes that were happening to me, they were permanent. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't something that was just happening 
you know, because I was under the influence of the medicine, it was as if like my true north, my perspective has completely shifted. And that was my truth. That became my understanding. So it, it, a whole a whole bunch of things started happening because of that. You know, um, you know, I, I went vegan, you know, I stopped I stopped eating meat and and uh, stopped drinking alcohol and all the things that didn't serve me just kind of started to fall away. And it was just a, a very natural thing that just didn't really take any effort, but it was just a product of just a byproduct, I should say, of using a medicine. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure, you know, like being an athlete, you probably are always being bombarded with different supplements or different things that, uh, you know, are, are supposed to make a difference. And a lot of the time they just don't. Right. So yeah. I imagine you probably came at mushrooms with a pretty skeptical eye. I, I really did. I mean, you know, uh, we, we have a saying, you know, the on, only thing that works is the things that are illegal. Right. So, you, you know, we just, you know, with, with the, uh, with, with the commission tests and the way they do, you know, being under USADA where you were under a strict, you know, testing program where, you, you had to watch anything you, you, you got over the counter. You know, if, if you got something from GNC, it wasn't even safe. You had to really make sure that it was uh, the stamp of improvement that meant that there was going to be nothing else in it. And it was made in a factory where it was going to have no other contaminants in it. So um, putting stuff in your body and, and having it work that is uh, not on the ban list it is rarely something that, that has happened, you know, that, that happens. So when I was getting the benefits that I was getting from this, I was like, dude, this is, this is crazy. You know, this is crazy. So it was a, a real eye opener for me. I imagine. And that's an interesting thing. The only thing that uh, works is something that is illegal. If that's a saying you guys had, interestingly enough, you know, psilocybin is federally uh, scheduled and not necessarily legal. Although I'm, I'm not sure it's something that they, they test for in any kind of sports as like a performance enhancing drug. No, nah, I mean, you can't test for it, to be honest. I mean, so, so they, they, you know, they, they don't really test for it. And, um, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it, it was something that, that I was able to use and not be able to be tested for it. But at the same time, the advantages that it gave me was just more or less, uh, you know, I can't even say advantages. It was just more or less giving me back what I already had, you know, kind of, kind of, um, kind of, kind of pulling, you know, some of the time off the clock from a neurological standpoint, being able to, you know, have that, that reaction time that, that when you see it start to fade, that means old age. That means that the fighter's getting up there. His legs are don't move the same. He don't get out of the way of the punch the same. When he gets hit with a shot, you know, he can't take it the same and all those different things that ends up spelling out neurological harm as you get older uh, was starting to be wiped away. And, um, you know, it, it was it was something that I, I couldn't even foresee, but I don't even think that the testing commissions can really understand this kind of healing. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And the other thing that you mentioned kind of at the top was that, you know, UFC career maybe isn't that long and there's so much that you want to do after that career is over. So you want to make sure, you know, everything stays in, in, in good shape and you're still um, thinking properly. And and yeah, it's it's a lot of impact. Right. So you want to be able to to protect that. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, you know, as a as a uh, fighter is one thing, but, you know, I've transitioned and I've been transitioning to you know, a role as an analyst commentator type thing where I'm in front of people speaking all the time and I'm, you know, got to, you know, come up with, you know, just got to speak. Right. So um, being able to have uh, the ability to still do that and, and still feel confident enough to talk and be able to go on without getting caught up on my words and not losing my train of thought and all the things that happen when you have a cloudy mind, uh, you know, it, it really meant a lot to me to be able to have that. And, as a fighter, you never really think that, you know, the things that have, you know, that can happen is going to actually happen to you. You know, from one point, you almost feel, uh, you know, unstoppable, you know, like, like you can't be hurt. But then when, when you start to have like these, you know, when you get that report card back and it's like, dude, you got this wrong with you, this wrong with you. And you're just like, ooh, I guess it could really happen to me as well. So then you're left with like, Okay, now now what do I do? Now 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 is there a way to fix it? I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't. Yeah, and 
obviously the the narrative around the use of you know psilocybin mushrooms and microdosing is changing a lot and this is a question for for you Dell obviously you were involved a lot in cannabis and CBD do you see a lot of parallels between what's happening now with psilocybin and plant medicine versus what was happening with CBD and on that same note what do you see the future holds for these medicines in terms of the the legal framework and the ability for people to use them yeah i think one of the biggest uh problems i see with the correlation between cannabis and and psychedelics is you know people seeing this as an opportunity you know and an opportunity to capitalize and make money and you know the thing that's so frustrating about it is we see in cannabis all these in you know, the inequality that, you know, I've got plenty of friends who've made millions of dollars in the cannabis game for the same thing that a lot of people are sitting in jail for right now. And as psychedelics becomes this keyword and people are super jazzed about it, people are jockeying for position for what they call an industry that's not even popping yet. It's not going to be for quite some time. And we also have the unique opportunity to set shit straight right now and lay the foundation for more equitable rollout. Yet people don't care. They're, they're rushing to, to, to have a brand to go public, go public with what you don't have anything, you know? I mean, there's a few companies out there that are doing it and going the FDA DEA licensing route. And that's, that's one thing, but for the rest of us who, um, believe in this as a cause as opposed to an industry. Now is the time to work towards decriminalization first. Talk to your city council members, talk to decrim nature, talk to, you know, create whatever you need to to get those relationships going and lay the foundation that uh, people aren't sitting in jail for the same thing that people are making money for, right? So um, as far as the future and what's to be held, I think that. Um, you know, I always say it's got to be decrim first, decrim first. And after that, I'm all for these medical models. We like there's there's so many people who are um, never going to access psilocybin through the trip to Jamaica one because it's financially not real or they don't have the network of friends who have mushrooms. They're not going to go get mushrooms from a street dealer like so they need that medical model. They need to sit with a therapist. They need a doctor. They need it regulated. And that's great. But Everybody should know they've seen it in, in cannabis, which is already federally illegal still. If we don't do it right now and shift our focus towards um, the equity side of this, as opposed to jockeying for position, it's going to bite us in the ass and we're going to look back on it and say, oh, well, you know, and let's start a nonprofit for all the people sitting in jail for psilocybin as our corporate social responsibility. It was like, you should have done that before you were making the money, mm-hmm. you know, and so we are uniquely positioned to create some change about how this unfolds um, in doing it now and what's going to happen. I don't know, but there's not a cottage industry. I don't foresee microdosing anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're the, the recreational model. I mean, I love psilocybin. I, you know, am dedicating my life to it. Maybe, I have the guts to do it twice a year, right? And that's $15 worth of mushrooms, right? right? I'm a $30 a year customer. This isn't cannabis. I got friends who smoke $30 worth of weed every day. Yeah. It's different, yeah. you know, and it's going to be different. So we'll see. Yeah, I you totally know? agree with you on that. It's, I mean, it's an interesting model and it will just be something that seems to evolve organically. Uh, like we were in Vancouver, Canada a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago now. I don't know when the last time you were there was, but they have dispensaries, mushroom dispensaries all over the place. You know, we saw at least three of them. They're bright, open, well-lit, well-branded uh, places where people can go in and speak to a registered nurse and get uh, get mushrooms from, you know, penis envy to enigma to Jedi mind fuck and everything in between. Right. It's really interesting. And I think, you know, uh, who knows how it's actually going to evolve, but you make some really good points. I mean, there people because there's opportunity to make money in psilocybin people are going to try and put business models around that that are maybe analogous to what we saw with cannabis but you're right it doesn't really work i mean because you you grow a bunch of mushrooms well you probably have too many because people don't actually need that many right it's not something people do every day yeah in canada i mean so canada is decriminalized no the whole country is decriminalized for psilocybin is my understanding 
Am I, am I incorrect on that? I mean, I, I definitely, I'm not, I'm definitely not an expert on the, on the legal stuff. So uh, possibly, but I'm pretty sure they're still um, fully illegal. The only difference is there are places in Canada that the law enforcement just doesn't bother with it. Again, it was the same with cannabis. And, uh, you know, we had an interesting conversation with uh, Dana Larson, who's, who's an advocate for cannabis back in the early knots. And he was a big reason why cannabis is now federally legal in Canada. And he's doing the same thing with mushrooms. But no, it's still illegal. But you're right. There's a lot of uh, misinformation because I've heard some people say, well, it's only illegal if you dry them or, or whatever. Nobody really knows. You know, it's just it's something that even law enforcement doesn't really know, I, th I think. So my understanding in, in Canada, it's yes, it's illegal, but it's decriminalized. So no one's going to get in trouble for it. Right. And so that's the if that's the model. Great. Dispensaries. I have I have no problem with access. It's it's ridiculous that these are <laughs> illegal in any way where we've we made this illegal. I just wrote a thing on our, our blog about, you know, microdosing is 100% uh, illegal and all these Instagram brands are coming They're you know, they're warranting a traffic charge here in the future. That's ridiculous. That shouldn't be the case. They should be able to sell that. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's not what is happening. It is uh, illegal. And more importantly, it's not decriminalized. So funds can go to pop you for uh, having possession and things of that nature. That's where that's what we have the opportunity and should be striving for before we start popping uh, businesses around it. Decrim first. After that, you want to sell it. However you do, it creates access. So I'm I'm for it. But the moment people are going to jail for things that other people are making money for, what I always say is like the moment the government collects one cent in tax revenue from anything that anybody's sitting in jail for, then, I mean, what's the deal? You know, that's, that's criminal. The, the government, how much, how many millions of billions of dollars they make from revenue on tax yet they still got people in jail for the same thing that they're making money on. They're crooks. And so I, I'll get off my soapbox cause I'll, I'll go nuts on that, but it, it's, it's very frustrating and it should be frustrating for everyone yeah. because you're sitting in jail in another dimension, you know, and, and if that were to happen to you, I think probably each and every one of us, I, I'll speak for myself and incriminate myself. I have been in positions where I will be, you know, life in prison for the amount of psilocybin I have, because I've had over an ounce on my possessions once. Right. Right. That's a felony that could send you to jail for a very long time. And uh, that's why I'm trying to fight this because I wouldn't want myself and I don't want anybody else going to jail for these simple things that are human rights. Yeah. Well, it is, it is crazy to think that. Um, and you know, I, I've been thinking about that a lot recently too, because for example, I read Michael Pollan's book, how to change your mind, which talks a lot about psilocybin and he's got, there's a Netflix series now, how to change your mind. But it's funny because he talks about his own experiences with psilocybin and with LSD and with all these other things. Um, and he's able to openly talk about it, no problem. But yet, as you say, there are people in jail right now for doing the exact same thing. And it's just this kind of weird dichotomy that doesn't seem to make sense. And I agree with you, those, those issues really need to, to be addressed. Whereas you have, you know, publicly traded companies on one side, a lot of them are, are pump and dumps, but whatever, publicly traded companies and that whole narrative building. Well, at the same time, if somebody gets pulled over randomly in some state with an ounce of mushrooms, well, they're going to be in big trouble. And uh, I do want to get Jesse to, Jesse's our producer. I'm going to get him to check on the, uh, the legal status. We'll at least get the Wikipedia version, but I don't know. I don't want to, especially if anybody's listening to this from Canada, uh, I don't think they are decriminalized. So make sure you make sure you know what's going on. Jesse's shaking his head. You know, he's saying still, still fully legal. <laughs> no legal, no legal advice here. And, and just, just for clarity, I know it's illegal, but I right. want to, I'm curious if it's decriminalized though, you know, but uh, I see yes, I'm not a lawyer. Don't take, don't take my, uh, you know, advice or thoughts on it. Cause I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I, right. I thought it was decriminalized, which still means fully illegal. Right. Right. Um, very cool. So I, I want to shift back for a second to the to the uh, functional mushrooms because I want to get both of your takes on this. But first, um, first again to Dell, um, it says on your website there, you know, you believe that functional mushrooms have just as much, if not more, potential than psychedelics, and you're committed to exploring that. And just for the audience listening, like the way I describe functional mushrooms, basically they're not psychoactive, but they do have functional benefit, right? We're talking about mushrooms like lion's mane and cordyceps. So 
do you, what do you believe is the potential? If you think they have just as much potential as, as psilocybin mushrooms, what do you think that, that potential is? Sure. I mean, obviously with lion's mane and some of the studies around Alzheimer's, dementia, cognitive, uh, cognitive issues that people are um, all going to face. If we live long enough, we're all going to have some cognitive issues. I think that uh, lion's mane holds the key for a lot of those things. Turkey tail for gut health and the immune system and how it um, correlates with chemotherapy. I mean, there's a lot of interesting studies around, you know, breast cancer and turkey tail. Cordyceps for respiratory health. Um, some of these other other um, fungi that are, you know, showing to kill pancreatic cancer. Uh, I think the thing that, you know, the scientific world currently is recognizing that we know about 8% of the fungi kingdom. You know, that's enough bricks to start the house, right? We've got a whole foundation and a whole house to build. Psilocybin, obviously I'm an advocate for it, but I think we're missing the point. Like that's one mushroom amongst so many that have so much potential. And it's not just the health of our, of our physical bodies, but, you know, bioremediation, right? The, the pesticides that could be used from, you know, cordyceps is a pesticide or is a, a, a pesticide in its own right or textiles, right? Like, so uh, mushrooms have so much potential to help in so many areas and I think at Umbo, what we keep talking about with, you know, Jake and Rashad being former professional athletes and whatnot is the idea of people taking health back into their own hands. So it might not be mushrooms that you're using. Mushrooms might not be for you or whatever. You're, you're, you're eating enough gourmet mushrooms to feel, you know, supplemented there or whatever. But maybe it's just a narrative. It's like CBD. Wow, that could help with epilepsy. Well, maybe mushrooms could help with cognitive issues or maybe some other plant medicine could help me with another ailment and it just broadens people ideas around health and wellness and hopefully helping them understand you might not always need a doctor to tell you exactly how to take your health back in your own hands you might be able to do it through diet and nutrition you might be able to do it through functional mushrooms you might be able to do it through cbd you might be do it through you know, keto diet, what, whatever's good for you. Um, I think there's a ton of potentials and mushrooms are just more of kind of a, um, an eye opening opportunity to all health outcomes. And even to Dell's point too, you know, also, you know, um, you know, my, my big thing and where I always speak about mushrooms from is for, for the neuro neurological benefits that it has. You know, I think that, you know, when we look at society in general, one of the biggest problems that we have across the board is neurological health, and there isn't um, there there isn't a lot that you can do for neurological health when it, health when it comes to just rebuilding it and, and really having you know a supplement that can that can do the work that's needed. You know, we live in an environment where we're constantly bombarded with neurotoxins that amount to you know, um, Alzheimer's as we get older and all kinds of other neurological neuropathy that happens as we age, you know, uh, as we get old, you know, that's, that's what we call old age, you know, it's neuropathy, you know, and we're okay with that, but it doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be that. And, you know, with proper education and understanding what these mushrooms can do, you know, it, it can really give people back something neurologically speaking that you can't find anywhere else you're not going to be able to go to the doctors and be able to get these you know uh get, get supplements or even get medication to help you neurologically speaking because everything that they 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 make from a pharmaceutical side has binding agents that neurologically doesn't flush through your system and that ends up causing more problems than it actually helps that's why you need a medication for the medication so when you start to look at these mushrooms and, and what they have I think one of the most promising things that they can they can do is it can really help combat a neurological issue that we have worldwide. I agree with you, and that's you know mental health is obviously such a huge thing that's coming more and more to the fold. And the, the more stories I hear from people who are getting benefits from mushrooms for their mental health is pretty unbelievable. And again, it's not just psilocybin, right? It's a lot of mushrooms, even reishi uh, and tremella is another one that people don't talk about a lot, but can have some pretty impressive cognitive benefits. I'm also interested, though, too, um, Rashad, in terms of like other mushrooms, maybe not just the mental benefits, but the just like physical performance attributes. For example, we work with some 
runners that swear by cordyceps and using that for so do you see that uh as something that's going to work its way more into the supplement regime or the general nutrition regime of a lot of athletes yeah i think so i think so you know because um you know i'm, I'm a big believer in it uh myself you know i just returned back to action after i retired in 2018 uh for a one-off fight um i fought in january but getting my body ready was was one of the hardest processes because i haven't trained to really, you know, got myself to get ready to fight in over four years. And, you know, being 42 years old, it's a lot different than training than when I was in the 30s, you know. So a, a lot, um, it was a different experience. And, and with that different experience, I had to, you know, find ways and, and, and I had to find a good supplement program that was able to have me being able to keep up, but more importantly, sustain myself over you know, 10 to eight weeks of training day in and day out at a high intensity level that you need to do to compete in a mixed martial arts, uh, you know, uh, fight. So um, we have a supplement uh, that, that we that we have, Michael Rise, and, um, you know, it has cordyceps in it. And, you know, the the benefit that I felt from it was just out of control. Like I, I would I would go and I would train, but I'm keeping up with, you know, these young 21 years old, you know, these 121 21 year old kids and you know all these young guys that are just you know they just have it naturally but i'm i'm, I'm outpacing them and, I, and i'm and i'm beating them and i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that you know i i, I supplement the quarterceps and it's like i don't get tired you know i find you know the the supplement that we have has you know a bunch of uh you know bio in them and, and rodeo prime in it and, and those things you know help with lactic acid buffers and all those kind of things that helps you keep going. So, um, I find tremendous ba ba uh, benefits from cordyceps. Yeah. Yeah. You are mushroom powered as is a lot of other athletes, which I think is really cool. And yeah, I'm starting to see mushrooms, uh, in all sorts of different supplements as well. Um, a lot of, a lot of manufacturers starting to, to figure out ways to incorporate it because a lot of times they go well with other things, just like you said, you know, like it may be reishi is good for calming. So people put it together with L-theanine or other supplements or cordyceps might go in a pre-workout or something like that. Um, but yeah, I wanted to bring it all back because it was funny when, uh, Jesse, our producer first reached out to you and said, Hey, we want to, you know, we saw what you guys are doing. We want to get you on the mushroom show. Uh, the response was, and I don't remember who the response was from, but was like, are you sure? Cause like, we're a competitor. Like, are you sure you want to bring a competitor onto your show? Uh, because we sell mushroom supplements. You guys are, are starting selling mushroom supplements. But, uh, my ethos is that, no, I think it's great. I think if you have a story to tell, if you're interested in mushrooms, if you're supporting the mushroom ecosystem, we want to have you on and we want to let you tell your story. So uh, I want to know from each of you again, uh, maybe we'll go back to Dell here. What, uh, what are you guys doing with Umbo? Tell us a little bit more about the company and, uh, tell us a little bit about what, what you're planning on, on doing with it there. Yeah. Well, first off, I just want to say hats off to you guys for not allowing that kind of scarcity mindset to come in. I was I was really uh, intrigued that you guys had reached out and I think it's very um, bold and very kind of showing of how this could shape up. So thank you for being like a leader and like the, Hey man, it doesn't have to be that way. So you guys are, are super rad. I've always loved fresh cap. I love how you guys include the beta glucans. Cause I always knew that that was a big deal. So you guys are rad. Appreciate you having us on. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to squash mycophobia. Right. And so, one of the ways we're doing that is with our functional mushroom bar. We have uh, bars that are made of uh, honey, walnuts, pecans, sunflower seeds. We have a dairy-free bar that's coming out that, that has tremella in it, is one of the five mushrooms in it. Uh, these bars have two and a half grams of mushrooms in them. We feel that's a good way to kind of like introduce mushrooms into people's diets because um, they, well, they taste amazing, right? And the bars are... It, the you know, what the world doesn't need is another mushroom bar or another bar, right? But a mushroom bar is unique. And ours, I always say, you look at all the, the bars and it's like, which one of these do I tolerate, right? You're never like, oh, I can't wait to, you know, chomp into a power bar or a cliff bar. No one loves them. They're like, yeah, right. these are tolerable. Ours, you could you crave. Yeah. They're damn good. Our dairy free is, is fire. People will love it. Um, but that's a great way to say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to start there, get some mushrooms in my diet. And, and I kind of talk about it like mushrooms are, you know, it's as if vegetables were removed from our diet, right? Well, if I said, Hey, try broccoli, 
try spinach. You're like, okay, cool. One, this doesn't taste great. Two, I ate it and I didn't feel amazing immediately. Right. But that doesn't mean you remove vegetables from your diet. I think we've removed mushrooms from our diet. I think it's kind of a, a long term. Let's start eating more and more mushrooms. So um, the bar can do that. Our um, capsules, the micro rise, like what Rashad was referring to for his training, those are some that you could fill. It's got bio in and in. We've got other um, branded ingredients in there that are, you know, very, very powerful. That's something you could feel immediately. Our micro rest for helping with sleep, to your point, the L theanine, sun theanine, reishi, lion's mane. Um, we we want to, we're working on launching some tinctures, as you alluded to, our other partner, Jake Plummer. You know, former quarterback for Arizona and the Broncos. Uh, we landed a mushroom farm. It just so happened I had a friend who bought a property in Fort Lupton, Colorado, and said, Hey, uh, I heard you're doing a mushroom business. Do you want to check out this farm? I thought, Yeah, sure, let's entertain it. And Jake and I went out there, and Jake is just like, Holy smokes, this is what I want to do. I want to grow mushrooms. And so he uh, he's taking that over and he's growing, you know, lion's mane, reishi, uh, cordyceps uh, oyster, some gourmet stuff too. And, um, the tinctures they make are very, very potent, very, very good, uh, good products. So we're looking at that as well. But, um, at the end of the day, I think Umbo, again, kind of leaning back into the taking the health into your own hands, um, whether that's through mushrooms, whether that's through cannabis, whether that's through exercise or, meditation or holotropic breath work. I don't, I don't know what it is. I just want people to know like, Hey, there's always a way to improve your health. That isn't what you were taught immediately. Right. And mushrooms, I think are kind of a, can be a catalyst. And I hope Umbo can uh, help launch that for us, help us. And at the end of the day, have the corporate social responsibility of giving back to responsible uh, psychedelic research through unlimited sciences and other really good nonprofits that are in the uh, psychedelic space. So that's my vision for Umbo. And uh, that's what I think. I love it. And I'm going to, I'm going to hand it off to Rashad. Now you said, obviously you've benefited a lot from, from uh, the stacking of, of functional mushrooms with psilocybin. Do you see this, of course, depending on what the legal framework is, we've talked about that, but do you see this as a potential future product line for Umbo, something that includes psilocybin, or is that something you guys think of completely differently? Yeah, I think when it comes time, you know, when, when all the red tape has been taken off the whole psilocybin market, I think that's going to be something that we, you know, be in prime position to take advantage of. But more importantly, you know, we're, we're gaining the trust along the way. You know, we're really, you know, getting out there and really letting people know that it's just, it's not always about the psilocybin. It's not about, you know, having that the psilocybin because we can work with, you know, the functional mushrooms that we have and really bring out the gold in those mushrooms, you know, and start speaking about those and really start bringing out the benefits around them. But I think when the time is right, yeah, adding the psilocybin would be, you know, it w- would be great because it, it's it's what it really, you know, brought me more into the mushroom space and um, the benefits of of it. You know, it, it can help out a lot of athletes, a lot of fighters who, you know, not only suffer from brain injuries, but also, you know, the emotional roller coaster of being a fighter, you know, the highest of the highs and lowest of the lows, like I said earlier. So, you know, having something that is able to help you, you know, deal with some of the stresses from an anxiety standpoint, from a, a depression standpoint is, is a huge component because the gains that you get from psilocybin they're your real gains. That becomes your true north. That becomes your perspective versus going to a therapist or having, you know, having to have some kind of outside influence, you know, give you a perspective or kind of coach you into thinking a certain kind of way. You know, you have to still, when you're being coached in a certain kind of way, you have to still hear it enough times and believe it in order for it to become your truth. That's a process that sometimes a lot of people don't make. But when you have a psilocybin trip, and you get that perspective, you get it. Like, oh, I get it. Okay, now I know how to do this. Now I understand. And that perspective is your true north. So the, the healing capabilities of what psilocybin can do is something that's not overlooked by us. And it's something that when the time is right, we're going to incorporate. I think that's fantastic. And I think it's a great way to look at it. 
And uh, yeah, I like what you said. I'm always amazed at the fact that these little mushrooms that grow on cow shit out in the field <laughs> can have such profound implications on uh, you know our our mental health and the way we think about life. It really is quite something, uh, and that's a, that's great. So. This has been a really fun conversation. I think before we land this plane, though, I'm going to pass off to either of you. If there's anything else you want to add, um, let us know, number one, where we can find you, where we can learn about more about what you're doing, and then anything else you want to add. And Dell, I'll start with you. Yeah, thank you again. Really appreciate it, uh, you having us on and giving us the opportunity to chat. Um, obviously, getumbo.com is where you can learn a little bit more about us. I try to throw out some blogs. I know Jake's writing some stuff there. And uh, again, just to inform people about the the potential of mushrooms uh i'm gonna i'm gonna plug our nonprofit unlimited sciences i believe that um what we're doing is very much honoring the community of people who know about psychedelics and i don't see enough of that i don't see enough nonprofits who are trying to uh, honor the voice of the people so um outside of our psilocybin uh, registry that is 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 closed now and we'll start publishing on soon uh, we have an ayahuasca study with, um, uh, I can only say, female refugees um, that we're trying to kick off. There's there's lots of other things that we want to do on that front, on the, on the science side, but it requires funding. And as a nonprofit, um, it, it, it's tough to uh, do that. Um, but unlimitedsciences.org. You can learn a little bit more about what we're, we're doing there. And uh, again, super humbled and appreciative of your uh, non-scarcity mindset. We need more people like you given the opportunity to chat about this stuff. So uh, really grateful to have a, a relationship with Fresh Cap. You guys are rad. Thank you. Happy to do it. And uh, last word to you, Rashad. Is there anything else that you'd like to add and, and let us know where people can can find you and learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, uh, you know, thank you guys at Fresh Cap and thank you, Tony, for the interview. Um, you know, it, it's it's really cool to be able to share this experience and be able to have a space that really gets it right and, and really understands, you know, uh, the, the the power of mushrooms and what it really can do, and uh, you know that that the mushrooms are the future. So that that's really cool that you guys do this at Fresh Cap. Um, you can find me at uh, Instagram at Sugar Shot Evans, and uh, you know I I, I post. I post here and there, but more importantly, I'm going to start doing some things a little bit more as far as, you know, um, you know, detailing my journey, you know, talking more about what I'm doing is from a simple mental standpoint of view and just kind of some of the things that I get down and, and do as well, you know, so it can kind of help people who may be going through just through something or just kind of want to get some more uh, understanding of how to use mushrooms. But, um, you know, uh, that, that's pretty much it when as far as comes to uh, reaching out to me. Uh, you know, you all can go to getumbo.com to find out more about Umbo. But um, that's about it, Tony. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. And we'll, of course, put all the links down in the description of this video. If you're listening on Spotify as well, all the links will be in the uh, in the show notes. So Adele or Shad, thank you so much for joining us on The Mushroom Show. And um, yeah, it was a blast. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Appreciate it.